What is happening, Max Sachs? So, back with a death battle, baby. I've been waiting for this death battle, as a matter of fact. Uh, this is going to be Tony Stark, the Iron Man. Iron Man versus Lex Luthor. I was talking to Fulvia the other day, and she always says Iron. Uh, today I was ironing. I'm like, no, it's not iron, it's iron. Iron. So we were practicing saying iron on the phone. Ironing. Ironing. Anyway, go check out Fulvia on her Instagram. Show her some love. Um, let's get this reaction in, because this video is like 20 something minutes long. Let's do it now. Come on. All right, Arnold, shut the fuck up. You shut up. I'm Arnold. All right. This episode of Death Battles brought to you by SGC, the greatest party in gaming, going down July 17th through 19th in Frisco, Texas. Head to sgconvention.com for more details. <laughs> improves our lives, lets you watch cool shows on the internet, and sometimes it can help you to rival gods. Like with Iron Man, the Armored Avenger, and Lex Luthor, arch nemesis of Superman. He's with an iron boomstick, and it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. There are the talented. There are the prodigies. There's Anthony Edward Stark. Please, he prefers Tony. Howard and Maria Stark ruled a $9 billion military tech empire. They could have anything they ever wanted, except a child. Then Howard met an alien who decided to build a baby for them. Fearing humanity would perish to more advanced alien races, this child was genetically engineered to lead the world to a new tech age. What? That was Arno Stark. We don't speak of him. When Howard and Maria were disappointed with what they created, they adopted Tony instead. Yep, that's the secret origin to Tony Stark. Didn't see that coming, did you? No! Despite not being the alien engineered child of Prodigy, Tony's gifted intelligence and world-changing destiny were obvious at an early age. He graduated from MIT with top honors and a physics and engineering double major when he was just 19 years old. But since this is a superhero origin, it wasn't long before tragedy struck. And by struck, I mean a car crash, and by tragedy, I mean his parents. So all of a sudden, Tony was an orphan. But on the bright side, it also made him the sole heir of Stark Industries. Nice. With the entire family fortune at his fingertips, Tony pursued a life of reckless indulgence and mechanical tinkering. War was his income, and he enjoyed every bit of it until the day his eyes were opened. Yeah, open with a shrapnel-filled irony bomb. Whoa! Held captive by terrorists in Afghanistan, Tony learned the bomb left shrapnel in his heart, which would kill him in a week. The terrorists gave Tony an ultimatum. Construct weapons for them and receive treatment, or be left to die. But being Tony Stark, he chose door number three. He built a space-age pacemaker to save his own life, and then built a mech suit around it and murdered his way to freedom. This touched on <laughs> one of life's most important lessons. Heroes aren't born. They're built. A lesson which also made for a pretty sweet tagline. My turn. But Tony's heart was changed in more ways than one that day. Upon returning to America, he nullified all weapons development at Stark Industries and dedicated his life to saving the world in his own way. Yeah, we're not talking like just donating to charity and being kind to your neighbor. Tony became a one-man army of justice and began creating a new and improved armored suit that the public would eventually dub Iron Man. And then he made another one. And another one, and another, another, and then he made like a shitload more. The Iron Man suits are numerous, but they typically come with a common base set of tools. Generally composed of a gold titanium alloy, his standard suits have the strength to lift up to 100 tons, mm. fly at supersonic speeds, and come with an onboard intelligence system called Jarvis, which controls his weaponry.
weaponry and can summon other suits at his beck and call. And for good measure, these babies come loaded head to toe with weaponry. I'm talking shoulder mounted darts, anti tank missiles, an EMP, and the Iron Man staple laser beams. These repulsor blasts draw power directly from the reactor in Tony's chest or chest piece, depending on the time period, to fire high mass negative That animation sucked in that cartoon. What was that? Most commonly, these are fired from Love the balls this of his suit. But if the situation calls for a bit more firepower, he can blast an even larger beat directly from his chest piece. Mm -hmm. Unity! Uh, All of these features come standard in his most often used suit, Model 13, the modular armor. This armor specializes in adaptability, allowing Tony to swap out its individual pieces for one suited to the mission at hand. Oh, and it also has an extra casing known as Iron Man Armor Model 14. But you can just call it Hulkbuster. As the name implies, this Looks upgrade like was built to with one of the universe's strongest beings. With a combination of magnetic and hydraulic technology, in addition to the strength of the modular armor, the Hulkbuster can deliver far more powerful punches and hold its ground against the Incredible Hulk, who is strong enough to lift a 150 billion ton mountain. But his most advanced armor yet comes in the form of his endosim armor. Part metal, part scary space alien parasite, Tony can summon it telepathically, use it to imprison his foes, and even suck up electromagnetic fields. The fuck? Mm, electricity. They can take hits from Storm's lightning, and shoot repulsor beams so powerful they can injure metahumans who are normally able to absorb energy. Hmm. Although Tony is a mere man who finds himself fighting with and against unimaginably powerful beings, he has proven time and time again that technology can compete with the world's greatest superheroes. He can survive blows from Thor's hammer, hold his own against Captain America, and move faster than an extremist enhanced superhuman's eye can track. Not hmm. to mention his suit can actually learn and predict its opponent's next move, oh, and withstand the fury of several nuclear bombs! Do not underestimate the Golden Avenger. That Marvel being Super said, Heroes. for all their power, the Iron Man suits are hardly flawless. They've been known to malfunction in life-threatening ways and consume too much power too quickly, leaving Tony helpless. Tony frequently pushes his suit and his body to their absolute limits and past them. And his reckless headfirst mentality is responsible for landing him in trouble just as much as it is for getting him out of it. This has led to him setting off a civil war between superheroes and pissing off the all-powerful Phoenix Force into killing Charles Xavier. Oh, shit. Charles, but he's the Iron Man. And he once built a device capable of releasing 20,000 megatons of atomic energy. That's three times more than all of the Earth's known nuclear weapons combined. And then he just blasted it straight into the ground! All because he wanted to see what was at the Earth's core. It didn't work out. But Tony's most diabolical nemesis isn't the Mandarin, or even Ultron. It's his lifelong battle with alcoholism. Sorry. Did you say something? <laughs> I love that walk and the look on his face. Armored face that Superman is. is among the most powerful characters in all of fiction. Yes, he, is. he can destroy planets, withstand supernovas, and fly faster than light itself. Oh, it's what kind man. of person could possibly be the arch nemesis to yeah. someone like him? Forgot. You'd have to be like a god made of magic kryptonite. Wrong! Nope. Just a mortal man with a passion yeah, man. for business, swindling, and green trench coats. Lex Luthor. Alexander Joseph Luther began his rise to the top from the very bottom. As a child, he lived in a rundown section of Metropolis called the, the Suicide Slum. Intellect yes, it was that bad. Under abusive parents, it was only by sheer willpower that Lex moved on to a better life. Yeah, willpower and some good old-fashioned social Darwinism. His parents died in a car crash when their car's brakes failed, leaving Lex alone. Don't feel bad for a second. He used their life insurance money to get out of the ghetto and start his own company. And he's the one who raped their pranks! Although founded through some oh, legally questionable means, the infamous LexCorp successfully spread its influence throughout virtually all of Metropolis. In time, Lex came to practically run the city itself. Taking ownership of nearly every media outlet, Luther's positive public image went practically unopposed. But everything changed when the Man of Tomorrow showed up. In 
Lex's eyes, Superman was a massive it's issue for mankind. Case, right there. If humans no longer had to solve problems themselves, they would surely become a weaker race, completely dependent upon this otherworldly savior. So Lex began his crusade to remove him from the equation, and then promptly insert himself as the ruler of humanity. <laughs> yeah. Lex is a cunning strategist and mechanical genius who prefers to place his opponents in unwinnable situations. However, if physical strength is required, he dons the mighty war suit. Must I remind you of my superiority? <laughs> the war suit is a powerful battle armor created by Superman's other arch nemesis, the alien god known as Darkseid, mm, and it's been further enhanced by Luther's own designs. Forged in the fiery pits of Apocalypse, Lex's war suit is no ordinary piece of machinery. Despite its less than sleek appearance, it comes equipped with force fields, gauntlet blades, a giant kryptonite axe, and energy blasts powered by kryptonite generators. It can also fly and has enough strength and durability to go up against Superman himself. Despite how capable the war suit is, you may feel it has an obvious weak spot. A giant hole where his head is. But old Q-Ball's chrome dome is actually protected by an invisible force field. He just wants his opponents to know exactly who's beating the shit out of him. <laughs> Sunshine. Lex's weaponry goes beyond an alien metal suit. In addition to his brilliant strategic mind, he has also surrounded the Earth with dozens of satellites bearing his name. Their purpose? A gigantic game of space laser hot potatoes. Oh. Being a genius multi-billionaire, it's no surprise that Lex's accomplishments match the expectations. He's equaled Deathstroke in combat, stabbed Supergirl, really? snapped Brainiac's neck, and defeated Power Girl in a single stroke. You can't blame him. I mean, I don't think anyone could handle more than a single stroke with Power Girl. However, Lex is not ah. really dependent on his war suit. He sometimes subjects himself to a kryptonite steroid, which has made him much stronger than an ordinary human. Capable of surviving wounds, nobody reasonably should. Yeah, like the time when a giant gorilla shot him in the chest with a sniper rifle, knocking him out of a helicopter off the edge of a cliff and landing headfirst in a canyon. He was up and banging his robot chick in like a day. Oh, yeah, he built a robot version of Lois Lane for, you know, sex what? and murder. Because Lex always wants what he cannot have. And his know-how with robotics goes past insane and into absurd. That was he stopped following comics. Cell, he built a talking flying robot that reads Moby Dick at such a high frequency it carved out an escape route through the floor itself, including perfectly shaped stairs. But most diabolical of all, when no one was looking, Lex Luthor took 40 cakes. He took 40 cakes, Wiz! That's as many as four tens, and that's terrible. Strange thing is, that's actually, officially, canon. Faster. Luther's hatred of Superman and drive to win are stronger than any machine he could create. Take, for example, the time Superman threw a satellite at Lex Corp Tower, bringing the building down on top of poor old Lex. This left the guy with half his face ripped off, all oh, four shit. limbs blasted away, and he was impaled in five different places. Even like that, he still refused Superman's help. Wiz, if that ever happens to me, do me a solid and kill yourself in front of me so my dream about living you is complete. Never gonna happen. But it's also that same cocky independence that serves as Lex's greatest downfall. Oh, shit. When he merged with the Zone Child, wow, that's not what you think. He gained, and I quote, infinite power. And a secure spot on somebody's watch list. The only catch was he could not use his power to harm others. But because all he wanted to do was kill Superman, he tried it anyway. So Superman just straight up punched the god out of him. Well, that's hardly accurate. Come on, how else would you describe that? Fair enough. Even so, when the Earth is threatened, you can count on Lex Luthor to Lex look Luthor. his enemies in the eye and fight for his people. And then exploit the hell out of him afterward. You know what happens when you take on Lex Luthor? <laughs> The second thing that's gonna happen to Superman. God. Which one was that? All right, the commanders are set. Before. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, we don't want you to have horrible, earth-shattering regret by missing the best party in gaming. So we're gonna tell you about it. SGC, the greatest party in gaming, is back to rock the Southwest for its fifth year. 
Posted by ScrewAttack, SGC is an event that you don't want to miss out on. We're talking three days of non-stop gaming in our massive free play arcade and console game room. Tons of battles with all your favorite internet celebrities, including Peanut Butter Gamer, Rooster Teeth, Funhouse, Pro Jared, Kinda Funny, and even a Dragon Ball Z Funimation voice actors reunion, where you'll be able to meet mm. your favorite Dragon Ball voices like Goku, Vegeta, and more. Not to mention, uh... we're hosting a death battle panel, where we'll be showing an all-new, highly requested episode, live. And that's just scratching the surface of what SGC has to offer. So don't miss out on the fun and excitement. Head over to SGConvention.com using mm. the link in the description and pre-order your ticket now. But first, it's time for a death battle! Let's get it. Let me know if y'all prefer me to do the whole death battle or not. I didn't used to do the whole death battle. I always started it at the fight. So, let me know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
That current damaged your battery. Power is at 15% and dropping fast. I recommend a new plan of attack. I have a plan. Enjoyed your reaction. Hit the like button, subscribe, and share. If you did not, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. One million subscribers. Woo! 